Okay, everybody, I am so, so excited today because I am joined by Carly Pope, aka Pope on a Rope, aka Carly Spencer in Demonic, which is in theaters and on demand today. How are you doing today, Carly? I'm doing really well, Steve. I just have to say, you have like the best, most infectious energy, and I just am here for it. So thank no, you. right back at you. This is really exciting to talk to you. I, I feel the good vibe in the uh, Zoom room right now. <laughs> yeah, but I'm really excited for you. The the film's out today. And it's amazing because you get this awesome lead role in this awesome film with a huge director in Neil Blumkamp, who you've worked with before in Elysium. Now, what I'm wondering is how did you land this big role and did that have anything to do with it? Is there something there with having experience with this director that got you it for this? Sure, sure. Well, I mean, there's the genesis of um, From Elysium to Demonic was, um, was, I mean, again, that was, we shot Elysium in, 2011, I believe it came out in 2014, but yeah, I think we shot it in 2011. And, um, and, you know, I was there for like six or seven days, like, like nothing, nothing permanent by any means. I had, you know, a few what's ups to Neil and thanks for having me. And, you know, like it was, it was a short exchange, you know, on a massive film. And I was so, it was so cool to be a part of that, but I didn't really, you know, I didn't really think anything of it and I certainly didn't think that I'd necessarily made an impression because there just wasn't any time to so <laughs> so then um in I think it was around two, 2014 or 2015 Neil had this idea to create Oat Studios right which was sort of like his sandbox of doing experimental content that he could control and put out himself and um and just play with. And he wanted to kind of have like a roving troupe of people that he called on to do these things. Cause he was, he was shooting in Vancouver for the, mo for the most part. And um, I'm from Vancouver. I wasn't living there at the time, but uh, I, that's where I'm from. So it's my hometown. And I um, auditioned to be a part of that gaggle of goons and, um, <laughs> And, uh, and, and then, I, and then got the, got the part or parts as it were. And so we did probably about four or five sort of like shorts together on oats over like the 2015 to 2017 time, I would say. So we had like more exposure and more experience with one another of like how we operate, who we are as people, um, what we care about. <laughs> and, um, and, then so we were in touch over that time and then like in January of 2020 uh I got an email from him and he just said look I I kind of want to do like a horror film um I don't really I have other things on the go but like uh, this is a concept that I that I've been thinking about and I'd want to do it would you be keen and I was like yes like yes of course yes of course like all the yeses and um and then when the pandemic shut things down, he was like, he was like more encouraged to do this film. And I just said to him, look, if you can figure out how, if you can figure out like the hows and whens and, and what's and, <laughs> and, um, and get me like from America to Canada and we can do this and we're allowed to do this, then yeah, for sure. So anyway, so long, long answer. Is, no, um, no, no. I, I love it. I, I could listen to you talk all day. This is this is good <laughs> stuff. And that's but you bring up the pandemic. And I was going to ask you that, too. Like, what was that like? Because you are such an experienced actress. What was that difference you noticed the most filming during a pandemic? Like, was that crazy? Um, well, I, I look, I mean, every experience is a new experience. Right. So it doesn't matter how many how many like decades of uh, that I've been around as an old chewed boot. But like it <laughs> you know, um, doesn't matter. Like each experience is going to be new and throw a curveball. You know, um, I think like it, at that stage, we'd been like the world had had uh, received the the news of Rona for about three months or so. So it was, there was a lot of nerves going into, you know, traveling, quarantining, like being on a plane, first of all, um, uh, being separated from my husband, like, like there was a lot of stuff that was sort of like nerve wracking about the experience. Um, 
be, because we just didn't know, you know, like what was set going to look like? What were the protocols? They weren't in place yet in terms of the unions and stuff like nothing mm. had been sort of established. So, so it was all like, we were learning as we went and, you know, our, our, um, production was exceedingly safe. We were shooting also in a small community in like the interior of British Columbia. Um, we had a very small cast. We had a very small crew. So like everything felt really safe, but there were a lot of unknowns, you know, there sure. were a lot of unknowns. And, and I think that was, again, part of the kind of like vibe, part of the like anticipatory vibe that bled into the film was kind of this like unknown world. <laughs> yeah. And and yeah, you're, you're, you're filming in this crazy world that we're living in and it's a crazy movie. And what's, what I love about this film is like, it is that genre cocktail of horror, sci-fi and action. Yeah. You get to do everything here. Was this in a sense, feeling like you were on a different movie every day because of that? Like, is this like the most fun gig ever that you could possibly kind of like get? It was the most fun gig ever that I could ever possibly get. Yes. Like, that. <laughs> like, like, like no ifs, ands, or buts about that. It's, and that's also, I just, I love working with Neil. Like every time has been an interesting experience. Every time has been a different kind of like a different kind of genre or vibe or like setting. Um, you know, I've had a, I've, I've been, it's an embarrassment of riches every time I get to work with him because it's, it's just really cool. You know, it's really, really fun. Um, and I, I've forgotten your actual question. I'm so sorry. My, my actual question. No, no, it's okay. It's just that you see all these different genres. So does it feel oh, yeah. like you're almost on a different movie every day? Cause you're one day it's horror. I feel like one day it's sci-fi. Like, is that kind of what's going down? Yeah, no. So, so the thing we, we actually like partitioned it pretty well. Like we shot all of the kind of more sci-fi stuff, which is the, the simulation world right? We shot all of that after we'd shot the main, like the, the, the uh, real-time content of the film. So there was a nice separation of those two things. And I, and I am glad about that too, because shooting that stuff was particularly science fiction like for me because it's like you're literally surrounded by like cameras and wires and bright lights and metal cages and hard drives and screens and I was like oh my god <laughs> yeah oh yeah what? you know like it was it was such a vibe it was so there was so much like electrical activity that um, that then having to do like the emotional, like powerhouse scenes of the film, like that's where like, you know, that's where Carly's getting gut punched in like in those sequences. So it was, it was a really, it was a really trippy experience to go from, you know, to, to, to learn how to like amalgamate and, and, and negotiate that uh, world. But that, that's interesting, too, because doing all that, but also like you just mentioned, this emotional story of Carly and that we see with no spoilers that the core of the story, though, is a story about a mother and a daughter relationship. Sure. Did you find yourself relating to that at all? Was this something that was heavy duty to get into the mindset of as the character of Carly? Yeah, well, you know, I think that like. I mean, I'm, I'm very, very blessed. My mom is still around and she's my favorite person. And I, I love her dearly. And, um, but the notion of someone being estranged from their mother and perhaps running out of time to find a resolution for that rift was a really compelling draw to me because I was like, that in itself would be horrifying to me. Like that in itself would be so painful and so hard. So, sure. um, so I thought that was really interesting. And I, and I knew also like, as a result, Carly is a very like withdrawn, isolated person. Like, like she is like, she's done that. She's, she's enclosed herself in, you know, and in order to, in order to heal any of that past, she has to be really open and vulnerable and allow the experience to wash over her in order to get to the other side, you know? And yeah. I, th I, I thought that that was, um, you know, I thought that was a good reminder and a good lesson as a human that like being vulnerable is okay. It's a nice thing. Yeah. To be. Feeling feelings no. are, <laughs> you know, hundred percent. And that's just a good lesson. And one of the themes you'll see in this movie and 
you see just from how impressive you talk about this character, how well you know them. So I'm wondering too, do choices like even having pink highlights in your hair, is that a character choice or is it just badass? Like, oh, it's cool, I dig this. Like, how does that even come about? I always wonder things like that because now everyone's gonna get those, you know. Yeah, I had hair, I would, I don't have hair. Yeah, no, it's, um, you know, that was sort of a choice that was based on a little bit of like an anachronistic element of the film where, you know, like, like Neil, Neil, when we were first going, he's like, like, I'm like, he's like general aesthetic is Rona, which is like a home hardware store. Sure, sure. And then beyond that, it was like general aesthetic, Moscow 91. Like, right. that's, so there's like, we had this kind of anachronistic element to it, but there was also obviously in terms of like the clothing choices, in terms of like, the hair in terms of the car like there's a there are there's a little bit of like stuck in the past you know sure there sure. is that stuck in the past vibe but the other thing too that I liked and and this was this was important for me was that you know Carly Carly has been so withdrawn and so closed in and so um so like re she's retreated so much from the world I kind of liked the idea that that she dyes her hair this color, which is kind of like a, a cry for help in the sense of like, she wants to be seen. She wants, there's something loud and reactionary about yeah. it, even though she's like held herself so tight inward, you know? Sure. So I thought, I thought that was kind of a, an interesting paradox. So are you talking about Carly, the character or yourself in third person right now? Well, well, Steve, <laughs> let me tell you, I have a few piercings, a few tattoos, and I've been known to dye my hair strange colors. And I was actually going to last week and I'm glad I didn't. But, <laughs> no, but okay, but that I, I make that comment because I also, this is another weird random question, but I think of these things, I think people think it's like your character being named Carly and your name being yeah. Carly in real life. Does that bring a challenge in itself because does it take you out of a character maybe if like someone's saying Carly but you're thinking of your character Carly does that ever even come into play yeah you know what it's so weird because I would have thought yes like I would have thought it would have been really hard but I think you know I'd, I'd cut off my hair I, ha I had dyed it like there was enough of like a character on who I am as a person that I really just felt like I felt like I could step into Carly Spencer's shoes, um, or like Converse in this case, and, you know, no problem. Like I, I felt like it was, it was, it was, it was okay. And and there were also elements of like you know trauma and withdrawal that I as a person have also experienced. And I I was really keen to mine that stuff. That I was like, mm. it didn't, mm. it didn't like the it. It didn't distract, I guess, to answer your question. It didn't distract me that the name was the same. I still don't know why Neil chose to keep it the same all, all said and done. Like, I don't know, because he was originally born out of, um, originally the concept of the film before we, before the pandemic, like originally when he first emailed me about it, he was sort of like, I want to do like a, you know, a low budget horror film, kind of like a found footage, paranormal activity, Blair Witch, like terrifying you know, film like that. So I think the original idea was like our own names because it was going to be that. You oh, know? okay. But then, but then it became an actual scripted narrative feature. And yeah. so there was yeah. there was no need now to keep it that. So I'm not sure if he was just like, you know, I'm not sure what he was up to there, but. No, uh, I mean, that, that. look, all these answers you're giving are incredible. I wish <laughs> I could talk to you longer, but people who are watching and are enjoying you, I mean, now they can go watch you in Demonic. It's in theaters today and on demand. Carly, thank you so much for joining me. And I hope to talk to you in the future one day. I hope so too, Steve. I, I, it would be a pleasure. It's so nice to, uh, to meet you here. And I appreciate you having me on.